and we are live it is thursday night it is the 6th of february it is three years since vapertrails.tv did its first broadcast february the 6th 2011 that's right in itself yep three years <laughs> wow some of the train robbers didn't get that you know <laughs> i know <laughs> i wasn't even meant to be here for one show that's true you were a, you were a standing for your mum weren't you yep see there you go with your that flash well. flash hair <laughs> i know look what i've turned into i know she's become a, a diva a goddess <laughs> i prefer diva i like diva diva's good diva's good is it yeah that's what we like to hear yes tonight tonight it's it's i'm it's i'm kind of excited in many ways because three years on everything's changed three years ago we were working with webcams skype was not as buggy as it is now no skype yeah. was great skype was great <laughs> but we didn't have the bandwidth to do skype means three years down the road and tonight i am joined not only by the effervescent loveliness and bountiful beautiliciousness that is the one and only bountiful salve Look at this smile. Look at that little smile on her face. That nice. <laughs> I'm speechless. But I am also joined by a southern bell. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> it's Sarah. How are you doing, Sarah? Oh, I'm good, thank you. Joined us after you've been on uh, recording for the telly as well. Yeah, the BBC, yes. Struggled through the tube strike. Oh, and, uh, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. Yeah, chaos. Complete chaos. Yes. Yes, indeed, I suppose it is. So that is the line-up. Now, everybody will be sitting in chat and on video on demand going, but he said Clive Bates was on. He <laughs> is. He is. Fret ye not, sweat ye not. Clive will be along in the middle third. There shall be no problem with that. So your team for tonight is yours truly, Dave Dawn. Johnny Lavery calls me a leg end. Does he? Yeah. <laughs> Dave Dorn, the vaping leg end. That's what he says, isn't it? Was that good? <laughs> that sounds like him. Yes. Um, so, joined by Sarah, I'm joined by Sav, and by the rest of the team uh, in the back room, as it were, helping Sav out with chat because we've got the best chat on the planet. And we're going to get into this. This is called VT Talk, and I hope you enjoy it. Yes, it's VT Talk, and there's, there is so much to talk about during the course of this evening that I hardly know where to start. Clive Bates will be coming up in the middle half of the three halves that we have. Those of you that are just joining us three years down the road from when we first started, you'll get used to it. Um, it, it doesn't hurt after a while. You become inured to the in inanities and insanities and inanities and various other bits of rubbish that come forth from this mouth which is spouting now. Isn't that true, Sav? <laughs> yeah, what? very, 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 very true. <laughs> Did you understand what I said? Not a word. <laughs> That's fair enough. Now we're gonna be looking we're gonna be looking at public attitudes to e-cigs a little bit tonight. Um, every so often there'll be references to the, the third birthday. Sarah and Johnny Lavery today have been filming for the BBC so we'll be talking about that. We're going to have a little bit of a, a natter about Nicky Sinclair and the trip that's gone because we've got two of the VTTV team. That's not easy to say. Two of the VTTV team, but I said it twice. Two okay. of the VTTV team are going to be going on that one and I hope getting a little bit of film. That'll be good. That'll be extremely good. Um, and well let's start. Let's start with Top Gear. Shall we start with Top Gear? Yeah, yeah let's start with Top Gear. You know you may well remember that three or four weeks ago there was a lot of us stood outside BBC 
TV and radio stations wondering why we didn't get an awful lot of coverage off the BBC. Then this happened. Happily though, after many hours of tedious pursuit, weaving, weaving, James finally made a mistake. Weaving, weaving. Did you see it? Yeah. Did you spy it? Could you see it from there, Sarah? No. <laughs> it was the hamster, Hammond, what's his first name? Richard. Ah, oh, that's it, Dick. Um, Richard Hammond sat with his 70s pawn tash on and his e-cig sat in his top pocket. If you blinked, you might have missed it. I'll play it again. Happily though, after many hours of tedious pursuit, weaving, weaving, James finally made a mistake. Weaving. Yeah, no. Did you spy? That wasn't that wasn't a looky likey either, was it? No, that definitely wasn't. It looks like something like a mini pro tank or something along those lines. It definitely had a curvaceous top, and I couldn't quite get the colour of the mouthpiece, but it certainly was refillable, and I suspect over two millilitres. Yeah. That was on the babe on top gear. I suspect we're going to see more of that. You've you've got a smile all over your face, Sav. What's going on? I'm just they're just trying to guess what it is in chat, and they're saying, well, it, it's great for first exposure on the BBC, and they're trying to guess: is it a pro tank? Is it a Kanga? Could be a CE, or but it's definitely over two mils by the looks of it. That's probably why he was being pulled over. Says Silver Zero. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to have another look at it so the people can have another guess I don't know if I can I, d I doubt I'll be able to slow it down we'll have one more look and you know, I might just play it in as I, we could use it as a sting we'll use it as a sting but here we go here's Richard Hammond and his ASIG see if you can spot what it is happily though after many hours of tedious pursuit weaving weaving James finally made a mistake Weaving. Well, what was it? I'm, I'm, I'm tempted towards a mini pro tank. Some people are saying definitely a T3, a CE4, a Kanga, definitely a pro tank. So basically, we have no idea. <laughs> well, it's about it because it's up on iPlayer, obviously, and it's about 53, 54 minutes into Sunday night guns. Top Gear. So there's one that if you've got Sky Plus or, or other personal video recorders are available, if you've got that you can pull it down, have a look at it, get it onto your computers, cut that bit and if anybody says nobody uses them, show them the hamster with his mini pro tank. That'd be worth doing. Exactly, but on the plus side as you said it's definitely a Gen 2 device. It's a Gen 2 device. It definitely is that. And the public attitude to these things now, I mean, you were saying last night, weren't you, on um, Team Talk that you're seeing a lot more of ACIGs about? Yeah, absolutely. Sarah, what are you seeing down in the smoke? Because I, I find it confusing down there. I don't look at yeah. people for fear they mug me. I, n I never, ever see ACIGs in the wild down here. Really? No. No. Well, I don't. I mean, I don't live in London, so it may be different in you in if you're in London. But certainly where I am, I never, I have never seen another one other than at vape meets. That's that, and you, you, you're in Essex, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, where near where? Give give everybody. Uh, well, I'm I'm Billericay. See, I uh, thought Billericay was London. Well, it's about uh, thirty miles out of London. So it's in London then. <laughs> Because <laughs> all these things are relative, I suppose. But <laughs> well, everybody thinks I'm from Newcastle, and I'm only five miles away from it. So yeah, that's true. You, I'm I'm just outside the M25, if you know where that is. I do. I've been trapped on it many times. Yeah. Yes. We all? So you you don't see too many down your way. No, no, and we've got hardly any shops. No, I don't. I think probably the, the, I think there's a shop about five miles from me, but it only sells cigarettes. Right. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's most interesting is this because where I am uh, up here near Sunderland and mm. I, I'll stress near Sunderland 
not mm. near Newcastle. That's Sav. Sav's near Newcastle. I'm near Sunderland. When I went, uh, I went out the other day. I had to just go and run an errand. Actually, I had to pick a dog up. Don't ask. Been having a haircut. I have no idea why. Um, we went and picked the dog up, and as I was driving past some council offices, this was Monday. You'll probably know Tuesday. Any whenever Wednesday. When was it? Anyway, whatever day it was, I was driving past the council offices, and there was a girl I used to know choose me words wisely here, stood there with what was obviously a tab on and you could hear it, hey I know, she's on the on the blower with the fag, hey I know, aha uh -huh, yeah, mm, yes I, she was telling us no I didn't think we'll be doing that mind have you seen him from over the road walking about with <laughs> bugger all on mind and next to her, about six feet away from her, was a a young lady who I've never met before dressed in a two piece do you call it a suit, a jacket and trousers that match in lady talk? It'll do. Right. So she's got a suit on and a green um, drip tip going into what looked like an iClear 30S on top of one of your favourites, the iTest uh, um, VV, the square one? That one. Yes. On top of one that wasn't that colour though. Uh, it was like a bronzy colour. Yes. And she was stood there thoroughly enjoying it. Thoroughly enjoying it she was. When I got into Sunderland on Saturday, after apparently Newcastle had beaten Sunday, uh, Sunderland, no, Sunderland had beaten Newcastle, I get confused, it's football, I don't understand it. Um, and they were bouncing up and down, there was ACs all over the place, all sorts of different ones as well. So we see quite a lot up here, but you don't see so many in Essex in London. No, no, no at all. I mean, on the few occasions I venture north, I I see people, uh, you know, up north, Manchester, and um, you know that that sort of area with uh, with them, but not down here at all. No. Well, that does surprise me. I would have thought that you know Essex being so close to the capital would have been a hotbed of mm. of vaping and what have you. Uh, it's, uh, but that said, there was some footage shot um, again by the Beep with uh, Catherine Devlin, which might explain a little bit of that. Let's play that in and see how that runs. It's interesting, this, and I've, I've got to say a big thank you to Sprotty for bringing me attention to it. I don't give credit to an electronic cigarette because you can still be addicted to them. I mean, I'm not a smoker, so I wouldn't know how I feel, but I think you can still be addicted to them, even though there's no, um, there's no nicotine in it. So it's still... When you use it in a place like Westfield, there's still children around and young people that see it, that don't smoke. And some of them look very attractive. They have different colours, different design on them. So these children may be um, attracted to them and they will see it like a positive thing to do. Since I, I, I'm uh, allergic to smoke, or and so uh, I probably wouldn't uh, be using it. Uh, but can you smell anything? No, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and it, it doesn't offend me, yeah, <laughs> it looks okay, I think she, she can carry on with it. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be worried, would you, if you saw that? Absolutely, I think anything that facilitates addiction around substances like caffeine, actually, even though I drink coffee or nicotine, is, is bad, it's bad. I just, yeah, absolutely. You don't like it? No. no. How do you feel? puffing on that all day. Well, it's definitely better than I felt when I smoked. Okay, so I suppose that's positive. Personally, I think it's okay. Because I'm a smoker, but I use one of those. I've got one in the car for when I actually travel. Yeah. Because I don't smoke in the car. No. Well, what do you think when you see, because it's a little unusual, isn't it, to see it in, in an enclosed public space, perhaps? Yes, it is. Um, the thing is, I gave up nine years ago smoking. It doesn't bother me one way or the other. And to be totally honest, it, it wouldn't affect me whatsoever. And I'm an ex-smoker, so good yeah. on ya. <laughs> and there you go. That was what happened in, in a, a shopping centre, which I think was Blue Water. Is that is that a shopping centre down your end? Yeah, but if that... Uh, if that was the bit of VT that I think it was, I think that was in the one, the Westgate at Stratford. Oh, right. Well, 
That is it, that your neck of the woods, is it? It is, yeah. So they're not obviously used to seeing e cigs mm. down there then? No. So, and I know you couldn't hear very well, but you have seen that piece before. Yeah, yeah, if it was the bit that, that she did in Westgate a month or so ago, I think it was. Yeah, it'd be about that. Yeah. It's uh, it's fascinating that you've got one who was not a samosa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just misheard it. I had to watch it three or four times to realise she was saying samoka um, or smoker. But she thought they were addictive even if they had no nicotine in, which I thought was rather strange, and she wasn't that keen on the colours. The guy in the middle who is allergic to smoke in London, I'm surprised he's walking about at all. Mm. But he was okay, he was fine, didn't bother him at all. And then the last two who got the point, obviously, and, and liked to see them. But it, it's, it's interesting that attitudes now, even since that was first aired, which was in November, I believe, Attitudes now seem to have changed. Certainly looking at all the different polls that you see on various different websites, very much the case, um, which is, is, is interesting in and of itself. I mean, you when you were filming today, uh, just just give us a quick overview of what that was about, because I want to talk about it a little more, perhaps in the, in the third half as well. But yeah. what what was what's the aim? First of all, when's it going out? Uh, Saturday. Okay. It's uh, BBC London News on Saturday, uh, so it'll be on, I think, the lunchtime news and the news that's on around about 5pm. Right. Um, and what it was about, basically, was about the bans in public places, people like, um, you know, pub chains banning them. Right. Um, so you'll have, you'll have given them uh, what for on that one, I would imagine? Well... I think it's going to be quite a positive piece because the guy, the journalist, is a vapor. No, uh, that's that's isn't <laughs> that handy. I like that. I like the fact that yeah. he's a vapor. Do tell me more. Yeah. Well, it's a guy called um, John Weeble. His name is. They wobble, Sorry, but they Jim, don't. Jim Weeble. Yeah, they wobble, but they don't fall down. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he, when when he spoke to me on the phone beforehand, he kept talking about smoking e-cigs and I thought, oh, here we go, you know, back to basics. Um, but when I actually met him there, he um, he came straight out and said, I think they're great, I'm a vapor myself. He's, he's not our sort of vapor, he, he uses um, a vape stick. Mm -hmm. you know, sort of a one up from a cigar like. Mm -hmm. um, and he was, he was very positive about them. And, and, you know, although we didn't get much chance you know, they throw questions at you and you, you don't really get any choice about what direction the conversation goes. Mm. Generally, it, it was positive. That well, sounds, sounds very good. I shall mm. uh, look forward to getting tuned into, I think, actually now, if you, again, somebody in chat will correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure, but on the sky boxes now, if you get up into the high... 900s. You can find BBC whichever region. Yeah, you can. Mm. You can yeah, and you can also pick which region on iPlayer, I think, as well. Well, that's I'm, I'm pleased I didn't dream that. That's great. So, 1 o'clock, I believe, and 5 o'clock, you see it? Round about 5, yeah. Well, that'll, yeah. that'll be good to watch. Has chat got much to say about this, stuff? Yeah, we've had quite a bit from chat. Um, they started off talking about vapours in the wild, and Miles Dolphin has said, they're common enough in Bournemouth, mostly Generation 2. Dick Puddlecote says, I see people every day on the road especially. Tony H says, I'm in Barrow and Furness and I see loads around here. Andy Oakley said they're growing in Torquay. And Mark Shaw said he's seeing more and more in London. Blaze said he saw a guy with a mechanical mod outside Sainsbury's last week. Uh -huh. Dan has said, never seen them in the wild in Kent where he's from but I see a lot in Nottingham and Edinburgh where I've lived since started vaping mm -hmm. uh, Lorraine has said interesting that the BBC have pulled up the negative reactions when last year they were using the positive ones Abru has said you get oh she's one of my favourite words you get the odd chuk de numpty at college going here is that a hash pipe you get the odd what chuk de numpty the Scots thing <laughs> chuk hang on hang on should a minute Chook, chook to numpty. Yeah, I call my brother-in-law that. <laughs> how is how is this spelled, please? It's a term I want to use. It's spelled with a T. T e u c h t e r. Chukta. Yes. 
Chick to Numpty. Hey. I call, I call my uh, my sister's husband gets called that quite a lot. <laughs> okay, back to you. Yes, uh, Heiko says ex-smokers seem to understand more than lifelong non-smokers. Surprise, surprise. Reptile Keeper say, said the only thing that has the only thing anyone has said to me was being told real men smoke, not use those things by a group of teeny girls outside his local shops. So he wasn't and on a promise that night then. No, <laughs> and Abru said I get stick from smokers, and I'm beginning to get sick of it. Well, Divin gets sick. Get even. Get a one, three, four. Get two of them. Get a silver and, and a black one. And chuck one. Right. Whack it up to full chat. Stick some 54 in the next time somebody says you're not a real man. And make it pure PG with a touch of um, Diablo Loco. And say, there you are, son. Drag that down your neck and see who's the bigger man. I would. But then, I'm a thick macker. What can I tell you? Actually, there was a fair few folks on Saturday when I was out in Sunderland had a try of this setup, which is of uh, of squip variety. It had some 54 in, and I was running it at uh, 15 watts, <coughs> and it was nice. It put a lot of vapor away, and one or two. Actually, I found the ladies. Oh, I've got to be so careful how I put this. The ladies managed it a lot better than the men which was not what i was expecting <laughs> did i have i got away with that just about yes <laughs> probably just as well and <laughs> it's probably the best point to take the adverts that we possibly can so here are our third birthday adverts they're very very special because we'll not be talking over them back oh. in two minutes <laughs> And we're back in the room. Now, if you're on Twitter, and if you're not, you should be, um, you will have noticed that at some time earlier today, probably around about quarter to 12, 12 o'clock, I tweeted that I would be talking to Clive Bates tonight on the show. Did you see that, Sarah? I did. You retweeted it, I saw. I did. She's <laughs> good. She's a proper little retweeter, aren't you, Pet? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes um, I can't think of anything to say. Yeah, I get like that. <laughs> uh, you, you, you go on already and fired up to say something and then yeah. you find that five other people have so you just retweet them <laughs> yeah <laughs> saves wearing my fingers out because i've got very delicate fingers no um clive is on the show tonight i spoke to him earlier and you will hear him say that pressure is important as well you could never say enough to your mp uh, to ministers to meps to commission officials and you just have to be relentless 
there that's what you're going to hear him say we spent 20 odd minutes having a natter this morning um so here's what we had to say and please listen carefully the man is a god and his advice is sound so I'm, I'm here with Clive Bates at an unearthly hour in the morning. Clive, what's the situation currently? Where do we stand? What's happening with the commission, the directive? What's the situation? Uh, small question then, Dave. Um, Just a little one, yes. <laughs> well, basically, we've got the text that was agreed at the end of December uh, and that was then rubber stamped uncritically by the Envy Committee, um, is now heading for the European Parliament plenary. Uh, which we think will uh, be at the end of February rather than the middle of March, as had been previously assumed. It looks like they're trying to get it sort of done and dusted as quickly as possible. Um, as as you and your, your viewers will know, the text is full of things that are basically ridiculous, mm -hmm. uh, like the limit on nicotine strengths, like the con limit on container size, um, the ridiculous thing where you can't actually... You can have flavours, but you can't actually say what they are on the packaging. Um, then there's things that are completely excessive, like the advertising ban. I mean, they, ban they, they justified banning tobacco advertising because tobacco, um, smoking more specifically, kills um, you know over half a million uh, people in Europe every year. You can't say that for e-cigarettes. In fact, actually saves lives. So... That's an absurdity. Absurdly large and bold warnings, uh, which I think when people see the mock-ups will realise that, that shouldn't, that's way over the top. And then all sorts of strange technical things about leak-proof uh, you know, leak filling and so on. And the directive is, frankly, a mess. Uh, and it's a mess because there's not been any consultation with users, with the businesses involved, with the expert community. Um, it's all been dreamt up behind closed doors, and they're not supposed to do that. So... That's the situation. Uh, there's a very high chance that the plenary will rubber stamp it. Um, in order for them not to rubber stamp it, a couple of things have to happen. First of all, uh, it has to be possible to vote against um, uh, vote against the uh, Article 18 or some parts of it. Um, it. It looks as though it's impossible to amend it at this stage because it's been rubber stamped by the, the committee. So amendments are off the table. We're in the situation where we just have yes or no votes on specific parts of the directive. But even to get to that, the president of the European Parliament has to agree to it. He has to, Mrs. Martin Schulz, he has to say, right, I will allow split and separate voting on this directive, which he is going to be, I think, quite hard. To, it's going to be quite hard to persuade him to do that. Mm. So that's the first hurdle is to get split um to get split or separate votes allowed, then the second hurdle is to get a majority of M MEPs to vote against it. Otherwise, the text goes through pretty well unamended. Yeah, so what, right, what, what do we then as users, what do we need to be doing? What courses of action do we need to take? There is, there is one and one thing only that is worth doing, and that is just to be absolutely relentless. Um, relentless, um, you can write to the President of the European Parliament, Martin Schulz. You can write to the leaders of the main political groups. Those are the people who will be deciding whether the split and separate voting is allowed in the first place. And then we've just got to fill the email inboxes and letter in trays uh, of, uh, of all the MEPs. Frankly, they, they've got to feel the weight of feeling that there is about this and the and the numbers that are involved okay so right we, we we need to email them i did see this morning actually that there was talk about a twitter bomb is that yep. likely to be of use well uh, mixed feelings about twitter because i mean the, the danger with twitter uh, and i think quite a lot of this goes on is is that everybody talks everybody sort of talks to the already converted um I think Twitter, you know, it's a good. It's obviously, everything is additional and beneficial, but it has to it has to count. So we need to start getting tweets into the um, you know timelines of MEPs. We need to get tweets that reach you know Martin Schultz and people like that. Um, we need tweets that mobilise action and extend the reach of people who are doing things. To me, uh, a few tw a few tweets don't count like for anything like as much as a good 
authentic, well-argued letter or email into an MEP asking for a reply, uh, being quietly assertive about what the right thing to do is. That's where that's where things really, um, really hit home. And we've seen this with Linda McAvan. She must have had, you know, half a million tweets in her timeline. Uh, it hasn't budged her one little bit. I'm not, not sure anything would budge her, but putting in... Uh, well-argued letters, I think, is the best use of time. And using Twitter to uh, expand the net of people who are doing that and to communicate directly with MEPs is a really good idea. OK. What, what about um, in the UK? Is there anything we can do from, from the point of view of our, well, not just the UK, but member states for our national parliaments? Is there yeah. anything that we can achieve there? Uh, well, uh, again, we should never, ever give up. The, the council has to agree to this position. Um, unfortunately, um, the um, European Scrutiny Committee cleared the directive uh, text from scrutiny earlier, um, earlier in January, I think, when, uh, well, I certainly wasn't paying attention. So um, that, uh, that line of uh, attack has gone now, effectively. <sighs> Uh, which is which is a shame, um, and you know I'm I'm amazed that they they dealt with this so uncritically, given all the flaws that there are in the directive and all the flaws in the process. But nevertheless, that seems to be what happened. However, it does make sense to keep the pressure on. Um, the council still has to agree, which means the British government still has to agree. Um, you know, when if we were if we were fortunate enough to get a change in the European Parliament, we'd need the right reaction to that from the the British government. It is always advantageous because what happens from here on in will be very much in the gift of the British government in the UK. What happens here on in will depend on how the government views this. And it's changed its mind a lot over the last uh, 12 months. Uh, it's no longer really backing medicines regulation to the extent it once was. So, that pressure is important as well. You can never say enough to your MP, uh, to ministers, to MEPs, to commission officials. and You just have to be relentless. Right. So the bo bottom line on it is then that we just need to keep banging away, doing what we've been doing only more so, multiplying yeah. this up exponentially. I, I mean, I know, I know why, and I'm frustrated <sighs> and kind of tired of it myself, but... You know, they do appear unresponsive, but that's what political systems are like. You have to hammer and hammer and hammer uh, to make a dent in them. And if you look at the change that has happened since, um, well, really, since the MHRA started declaring it would be regulated as a medicine, look at the improvement in understanding. Look at the allies who have been created. Uh, look at the greater insight that there now is in the political and even the, you know, the official classes. Um, it is all working. It just doesn't lead to especially dramatic changes. Although we had a dramatic change in October uh, last year in the European Parliament. So it is working. It just feels frustrating. It feels like hard, a hard uphill struggle. Nobody ever, no politician will end up and, and say, oh, I had a letter from Dave Dawn and that, that changed my mind. <laughs> they never give you credit like that. No. Just mean it hasn't changed their mind. Indeed, indeed. Um, right, I'm going to put my pessimist hat on now and say if this isn't successful, if we don't get through what we would like to get through, if, if the split vote doesn't happen, does that mean we let the pressure up? Is there, in, in all of this, kind of a review in two years' time where we might get changes made? The, the moment they the moment they agree this ridiculous text, that's the moment we start calling for new legislation. I mean, it, it is. I mean, first of all, there's a there's there's a political track here. Um, even the most stupid member states, and there are many of them, um, will will start to feel outmaneuvered by evidence eventually. I mean, we've all we've already seen some very interesting new studies coming out that suggest that e-cigarettes really are effective out in the wild. Not in clinical trials, not in, you know, stop smoking services, not anywhere, but out in the marketplace, as you would expect. Now, that is that is unassailable evidence. We've also seen um, 
the diehards like British Medical Association shifting, shuffling their feet. If you listen carefully to what the previously avowed opponents of e-cigarettes have been saying, not all of them, but some of them, they are shifting their position. They're softening their line. Their collision with reality is proving too brutal for them. So they're coming on side gradually. The more of that, the more time that goes on, the more people will look at this directive and think, well, that is just, you know, a crock of shit, frankly. Um, it's, <laughs> it's actually, uh, you know, so badly designed, we would actually quite like a new, uh, you know, a new set of proposals. There's nothing to stop the next commission introducing a new set of proposals. Um, you know, so the other thing that might happen is legal challenges, you know, um, I, I would argue that most of the things that we dislike in the directive fall foul of European law. Um, the reason is for, the, for there to be any interruption in the free movement of principle of the free movement of goods, any sort of departure from that, uh, and that's what a lot of the directive does, it departs from the principle of free movement of goods, there has to be an argument that it's creating a high level of health protection. Well, if it isn't creating a high level of health protection, in fact, it's protecting the cigarette industry and uh, making it harder for people to switch from smoking, then it isn't lawful in EU law. End of. So the question is any, whether anybody wants to have a go and say, you know, this is up for challenge. You know, things like the advertising ban, clearly disproportionate. You can't just ban advertising without a reason. You know, you can't ban it for you know, the silly reasons that Gerard Hastings says, that it's all attractive. Of course it's attractive. It's intended to be attractive. It's advertising. <laughs> it's advertising. <laughs> Wake up. You know, we're, we're, they're not selling athletes' foot cream. They are selling a product that is, they want to get buzz about it. They want to get buzz that outtrumps the buzz from smoking. They get that. They get a health result. No wonder it looks like cigarette advertising. So you've got these ludicrous arguments that are being made on the sidelines that make no sense at all. But underneath it all, an illegal position by the uh, EU in banning that sort of advertising without the reasons uh, to justify it. As I say, they justified it on the back of uh, banning tobacco advertising because more than half a million people a year die from uh, tobacco. No one dies from e-cigarettes. Well, that's, that's, that's exactly the case. And I have to say, I do have a slight vested interest in the, uh, the well, ban on advertising because that would cause us enormous problems well actually for an internet-based uh, commerce um, <laughs> you know and all the forums carrying sponsorship and that kind of thing it's a massive blow on a, actually what is a really helpful and interesting phenomenon in e-cigarettes and vaping which is all the sort of peer-to-peer -peer support um, and that, you know someone it doesn't cost a lot of money but somebody has to provide the infrastructure for all of that um, and the best and most obvious way to do that is to carry a bit of advertising um, or to get some sort of sponsorship. And all of that would go under the directives. Completely ridiculous, completely disproportionate. You're absolutely right. And I'd argue the point that it doesn't cost a lot of money depends on your, de well, your definition of a lot. And I'm yeah. not going to give up, and I assume you are not. No, 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 no. It's not over until it's over. Um, you know, when, when you set out what's wrong with this... Um, you know, as I, I did in the letter I sent to Schultz yesterday, you look at it, you think this can't be right. You know, they can't possibly agree to this. They're violating the treaties left, right and centre. They're producing measures that create harm, measures uh, that clash with other laws, measures that invite derision, um, you know, m measures that simply don't work or are disproportionate. You can't, you know, you can't assume that everybody will just, I mean, maybe maybe you can, one could be very cynical about a European Parliament and just assume that they'll trudge through the lobbies, say, well, that's the best we can do. Sorry, everyone. Um, but I, you, you don't know how the dynamic will actually take off. Um, you know, whether someone will get it in their heads that actually we do, you know, there is an election coming up and we do look like idiots. Um, why do that? Um, so... I am i wouldn't rule it out. You you can't really rule it out until you've seen how it, it, you know, all the dominoes fall. I mean, it's perfectly possible that Schultz will say no to a split and um, um, 
uh, sorry, split and separate vote, in which case you'd have to ask people to vote against the entire TPD, and none of them will do that. It's hardly, hardly even worth asking, because mm. then they would just say, oh, well, you're just a tool of the tobacco industry trying to get the whole thing stopped. Um, so it's never been good to try, even though a lot of the rest of the directive is pretty stupid as well, it's never been, it's never been a good tactic to try to go after, after that at the same time. Um, so... I, I don't know. I wouldn't give up. And the other thing I think, Dave, is that uh, I think these people have made all these decisions. They need to feel it. They, they, need, they need to know that this isn't something that they can get a pat on the back for or nobody really bothered and there was just a bit of artificial fuss. That's good for government, really, that they feel that when they press that button, they're doing something that has been pointed out to them over and over again is a stupid and wrong thing to do. And it might cause them to question how they go about their business in future. Indeed, indeed, and it's a very valid point. Um, one final thing before I let you go. The World Health Organization oh. apparently is looking to make um, any nicotine derived from tobacco a tobacco product. Yeah. And I know we were talking about this on Twitter with Lex Specialis and various <laughs> other things. What do you make of that? Uh, well, I, I, you know, I mean, it's a rogue organisation there. I mean, I call it now sort of Geneva-based death cult because I think they're, they're basically stopped being interested. I mean, they're going on endlessly about a billion deaths from tobacco um, uh, in the 21st century. Most organizations would regard that as a monumental failure if the thing that they were basically responsible for in the international system led to a billion deaths. Um, they don't see, and they seem to have a singular vision of what counts as good tobacco control measures. And it's all coercion, prohibition, uh, intrusion. Uh, it's all very punitive on the, on the users. And they haven't grasped this idea that you can get all of those measures are actually more effective, whether you like them or not, they're more effective, if you give somewhere for people to go. And this is the ridiculous thing. So it's saying to people, change, 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 change. And then the only thing you can offer them is complete quitting, quitting smoking, quitting nicotine, quitting smokeless, leaving them with um, missing, missing nicotine, missing the experience, with cravings, withdrawal symptoms and all the rest of it. And, and somehow expect that to work. So at a very deep level, I just don't think they understand what they're doing. So tactically, they don't like these developments. Uh, they don't like smokeless tobacco. They don't like uh, e-cigarettes or ni recreational nicotine products. So like the Americans, they're looking at classifying these things as tobacco. I mean, this is what's going to happen with the FDA as well. They're counting e-cigs as nicotine, uh, as tobacco products. Mm. You know, it, the trouble is then that all the restrictions and all the things that have been done to tobacco suddenly apply to e-cigarettes. Suddenly, if e-cigarettes are tobacco or, you know, e-cigarettes are tobacco products, then the people who sell them are the tobacco industry. You know, if you're e even if you're e-lights or enjoy and you've never been anything to do with the tobacco industry, you're suddenly counted as the tobacco industry from for the point of view of access to officials, um, your role in developing regulation. You get all of those exclusions. They said that um, the provisions relating to secondhand smoke would apply. Ridiculous, um, uh, and that all the restrictions on advertising could could be applied as well. And, you know, that is so counterproductive. It's such a damaging thing to do. But that is where they're at. That is what they're, what they're doing. And they've got a programme of stuff leading up to that this year. They've commissioned research from Stan Glantz, of oh, all people. Oh, God. I know. They've, they've asked him to give them advice on e-cigarettes. They've gone to the most hostile person in the world um, and probably the craziest when it comes to science and evidence – and they've asked him for advice on uh, on the science of e-cigarettes. Okay, they haven't gone to Farsalinos, Pelosa, Lynn Dawkins, or any of the people who actually know about it. They've gone to him. Um, they've done a similar thing on smokeless tobacco. They've gone to the National Cancer Institute uh, just to prove that there is smokeless tobacco somewhere that causes cancer. Again, it's all building up 
to a very hostile outcome in Moscow in October this year, which is the next conference of the parties of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Yes, it's, uh, that's an event that I, I've got to say I'm not particularly looking forward to, and I think we probably need to take action about that as well. Um, I know your time is short, Clive. Uh, I, I want to say a big thank you to you for, for joining us and, and doing this little pre-record. Um, anything else you need to add before we call it to a close? I just think uh, if you care about your e-cigarettes, you care about vaping, you care about freedom, you care about public health, you've just got to be relentless. Um, you've really got to just get those letters, get those emails, however tired, however frustrated, however unresponsive they are. Believe me, the system does respond, just not in a way that visibly attributes its changes to you personally. So just keep at it. That's my message. It's not over until it's over. And even when it's over in the EU, it's not over. There's the WHO, there's the British government, there's the implementation, there's millions of local authorities, there's all the transport providers, public space operators and everything. You've just got to keep, if you want it, you're going to have to fight for it. Clive Bitt, thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. And we're back in the room. That was Clive talking to me earlier today. He couldn't make tonight because he's out working on this, even as we speak. Creating allies and making more friends. Brilliant bloke. Sav, what's chat had to say? Chat have had an awful lot to say. Um, I'm just going to rattle through as much as I've got as quickly as I can. Actually, but before you do, before you do, um, I've I've just remembered what you said I had to do, and I, I'm sorry. We do understand that there have been some issues with the stream tonight. Um, I can tell you 100% it's not coming from here. It, it's something to do with the weather, our service provider, and it doesn't seem to be for everybody. We're looking into it. The back team boys are busily scrabbling about, like, whatever, trying to get it sorted. We will fix what we can when we can. If there's been bits you've missed, please do catch it on video on demand. Sorry, Sav, I just... Perfect. I get wrong if I don't do it. <laughs> you do, yes. Off both you and your mum, and that would just not be good. No, no, definitely not. Right, I'll start with what Steffi has said. She says, uh, Mrs. Sumner has confirmed the 26th of February today, and it says, no debate, just vote. Yep. Uh, Whip It Up says, the whole bloody thing is absurd. Mark Shaw says, it's a mess because idiots wrote it. Leanna Lawless says, it's insane and technically impossible. Lorraine has said, lady from the Ombudsman on Twitter earlier showing interest in all this. That's good. Whip yeah, Whip It Up has said, if they are not supposed to do it, how the hell can it be legal? Mark Shaw has said, they could consult for a decade and still come up with a load of cards wallop. Mm -hmm. Whip It Up says, I've emailed Martin Schultz, not expecting much though. Lorian has said, I doubt anyone will get a reply, but the number of mails they will get will have an impact. Indeed, flood them, flood them. Yeah. And he says, nobody can ignore a continuously full inbox. 
Dick Puddlecoat says, need to use the correct hashtag. They get noticed if using hashtag EU. Slim UKV said, we should fax him. Can't ignore a bloody big pile of paper on the floor and fax numbers are listed on the EU website. Oh, that's clever and devious. Isn't it? I love that. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are apps for doing that, are there not? You yeah, you can send them for online. You can do all sorts. Right. There you go, folks. Find out how to do it and fax the... Oh, I nearly said something I shouldn't. <laughs> you did, did, did. <laughs> you, Sav. Vapor Keeper has said, that's the one thing we have stacking up relentlessly on our side. Evidence. Mm -hmm. Lena Maria said, I never wanted kids, but I'd consider having Clives. <laughs> I could be upset by I, I could be well upset by that, you know. <laughs> I think there's a queue as well, so I'm not sure who was first in the queue, but... <laughs> I just don't want the sloppy seconds. <laughs> <laughs> S372 said, The fight won't begin until the ban actually takes place and two million new vapors who can't buy tanks suddenly re realise the EU has screwed them over. Yes. Liam D. Vapor says, Interesting to see Clive's views on the health folks slowly backing down. Whip it up said, Again, if it falls foul of the law, how can it be made law? Because they can, d d d I'll dive in. I'm sorry. I, I, Go for it. I, I've been told by a number of people in Brussels that quite frequently they are told you can't do that. It's not legal, and they'll just say, "Well, look, we'll do it," and then if there's a, a court battle, we'll know we've done it wrong. If they don't take us to court, then obviously they accept it. That's why. Eh, sorry. Uh, quickly, can I just say, VB, the private message you sent me, can you please send it to Kat? Because I accidentally closed it on the screen. Sorry. Um, where was that? Yeah. Lorian has said regarding the adverts, well, two ads have been banned this week for being similar to NHS adverts. Mm -hmm. Dan has said the long term evidence will heap up over the next year or so. The medical professionals will start listening to the real scientists and the research for cancer research and so on. And hopefully we will crush big tobacco pharma lobbying. The whole thing is ridiculous. Vaping has drastically changed my life and many, many others for the better. It will be a sad day if this irresponsible bull goes through. Mm -hmm. This entire issue is political and commercial. There is absolutely no health considerations whatsoever. It makes me sick. He speaks the truth. He certainly does. Um, Becky has said, Dear EU, 1984 was a warning, not a bloody instruction manual. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark Shaw has said, Reading Chris Davis' letter today, the biggest concern about E6 is, go is it's going to a second reading and the TPD going over to the next parliament. Not what it would mean for the future of E6. Do you know what? That's such an annoying thing and it is so right that does appear to be the biggest concern that they have that that it's going to delay the tpd and quite frankly i couldn't give a monkeys because as far as i'm concerned the tobacco provisions in the tpd will have the square root of bugger all effect anyway and what they're passing up here is the opportunity by choice for people to choose what i think everybody agrees is a, 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 a less risky option. Please note the form of words that I'm using. A much less risky option and alternative to the smoking of lit tobacco. Even lifelong smokers are aware of that. And they're not against e -cigs. They're very supportive of e -cigs. They just choose not to use them. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. What, what do you think of that, Sarah? Well, can I just say about Clive Bates, for, uh, first of all, he's an absolute inspiration. The man doesn't vape himself. Mm -hmm. And look at the energy he puts into our cause. You know, every time I see Clive or I read his uh, website, it gives me the inspiration to carry on. Because I, I just think if he can put that amount of energy into it, then, you know, I can too. And he needs our support. You know, he he's just a voice on his own if we don't back him up and send those emails. You are so right in what you say. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I sent mine to uh, Martin Schultz as soon as it was called for, which was actually before Clive wrote his letter. And, of course, mine was very short and nowhere near as good as Clive's. But, you know, it's numbers. If If people see that Clive's got that support... You know, we might get somewhere, but he can't do it without us. And I'm starting to think, well, I've thought for a long time that we can't do it without him. We are so lucky to have him. He's 
he has been instrumental, he and Jerry Stimson between them. Yeah. And I'm going to med- mention Paddy Costall. That's me getting a foot mm. up my backside the next time we meet, but it's true. Those three blokes, Paddy Costell, Jerry Stimson, Clive Bates, between them, have brought an awful lot of people together, have done an awful lot of work that the bulk of the vapors out there don't know about and probably will never know about. There are some of us that do know what's been going on behind the scenes um, and we've not been able to share the stuff we know now that we can't share um, because it's so important that it's kept confidential, shall we say. And Clive and Jerry and Paddy are at the centre of all of that. They are gurus as far as I'm concerned. Um, If I get a phone call from any one of them saying, Dave, can you be at? I'm there like a shot. Gob on a stick, mouth for rent. I've got no credentials, whatever, that that, that would make anybody in government listen. But apparently, gob on a stick. If they say, Dave, we need you to do this, I'm there like a shot. And Clive is saying it now. I too have emailed Martin Schultz. I've also emailed all of the leaders of the various different political groups and the next batch 750 odd i've got no idea how long it's going to take to go out but every mep is getting one as well and i would exhort you to do likewise be relentless and no it's not an energy drink sav has <laughs> chat got anything to add yeah vapor keeper said just take this out of the tpd and put the tpd through at full steam that makes no sense v power has said but a split vote won't delay the TPD. It's the best of both worlds. We need the split vote. Mm -hmm. Mark Shaw says, but they're only terrified for political reasons and it's personal political reasons, not for the party nor the public. Totally selfish. Ridian Mann says, they have a choice to screw us over. We have a choice to vape. If they don't like it, we have the choice not to vote for them. An old chemist has said, do you think we should start faxing them now or rather wait until the last few days? And Andy Oakley's pointed out that Clive has a great example letter on his site to just reword it if you're not sure what you want to say to these people. Yeah, uh, uh, right, faxing started. The elephant's toilet roll that's in there is about five quid a roll, isn't it, Sarah? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> if you can cost every office 30 or 40 quid with faxes, go for it. Mm. Go for it. Christ above, they spend enough money doing God knows what to act against our best interests, let's make them spend some money because of our best interests, because we want to be a pain in the backside, politely. With respect to Clive's letter, if I can find it, I've got mine here somewhere, I'm going to show you mine, and you'll see how big it is, and yes, I know I am a gob on a stick, and stuff like that, but here it is. Um... There you go. That's how long it is. And it's very, very simple. It simply says, I write to you in great concern that the forthcoming plenary vote on a tobacco products directive will result in doing more harm than good. I refer specifically to Article 18 dealing with electronic cigarettes. That sets the scene. I would urge you to allow and support split and or separate votes on Article 18 at the European Parliament's first reading. I also hope you will lead by example by voting against Article 18 so that better regulation for e-cigarettes can be developed while the rest of the Tobacco Products Directive can proceed to a conclusion. As the current text stands, everything I use would be rendered illegal and as a one-time smoker of 60 cigarettes a day, I can tell you now that a nicotine concentration of 20 milligrams per milliliter simply will not work for me. I use concentrations of between 36 and 50 milligrams per milliliter with no ill effects and no danger of overdose. Similarly, a reliable cartomizer, uh, sorry, a refillable cartomizer size of two milliliters would require me to be constantly filling. In other words, and to keep this brief, the current text condemns me to either purchase on the black market or return to smoking lit tobacco. Nicotine abstinence is not an option for me. Please act on my behalf and ensure that proportionate regulation is negotiated properly, in public, with expert guidance and without rush. Thank you, David Dawn. That's what I've sent. It doesn't need to be technical. It doesn't need to go through all the whys and wherefores. You don't need to know the nature of the fart and what caused it and where it came from. That doesn't need to be in there. Your feelings do. Write your own email. Get it sent off. The links are on Clive's blog. 
so you can pick up exactly the same as I did and there are links to all of the uh, EU parliamentarians there as well get in touch with everybody you can tomorrow for instance at 3 30 I will be meeting with my MP Keith's coming with me I'm gonna plant an 82 page document in front of her the one I tweeted earlier on uh, about nicotine that, that um, has come from the uh, American Ham American oh, ACSH I can never see it it's, it's <laughs> that time of night right so I'm printing that out and I'm going to take that down and smack it down on the desk in front of her and say there you go you need to read that that'll give you all the ammunition you need to fight on my behalf we need to step this up now we need to make our voices heard we need to get out there and get these people told we need them to know what we want to happen there should be nothing about us without us that's the the rallying cry if there needs to be one sarah absolutely absolutely get ranty but polite make your feelings known it's it's all we can do and it's it's so important that everybody does it absolutely right Sav, what we got from chat chat again there's a lot of people saying to get they want to get ideas from letters that have already been written but make sure you put all that into your own words and things like that um they're all very very positive about doing this and they loved your letter and slim uk wants to know did you end it with love and kisses no i'd have stuck some racing in it if i'd had half a chance <laughs> if you could have done that electronically um as dk said these people know they're assholes no need to mention it in your letters <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, you know, it, it would have, it would have been, it would be so easy to get really ranty and really abusive, because I have to say that over the last twelve months, there are times when I felt that they've abused me personally, and not not just me, but every vape, and not just in the UK, but EU wide, and not just EU wide, but worldwide too. We seem to be coming in for abuse from all kinds of people. Thankfully. As Clive said, over the period of the last 12 months, we have seen more and more skittles fall in our direction. People who at first said, it has to be meds, are now going, it definitely shouldn't be meds. It's, no, it's a daft idea. And, and it's, it's great that that's happening. We need a little more time. This fight is not over. We've got the fights to fight, like with Stoke City Council, with their idiotic ban on vaping in, on council property those are fights that we need to be fighting there are all kinds of fights that are going to be going on Nigel Farage who apparently we are friends of Sav apparently so yes yes where the, Sav and I are the two people that he keeps talking about apparently mm -hmm. um, but he said and it, this was very wise he said listen Dave he said if you if you if we do win this one if this one does get put to bed they won't stop they'll keep coming and they'll keep on coming until they realize there's no way they're going to get their own way he said but you'll not stop fighting for a long time yet and i'm here to tell you i'm in it for the long run there is no way on the face of this planet am i going to back down and let these plonkers have their own way with my life with your life and with everybody else's life like i've said before from my cold, dead hands. It's the only way they're going to take this off me. So I'm going to throw it across to chat for the last word. Well, um, actually, I'm going to steal the last word from chat for us, <coughs> because uh, uh, one thing, one of the teams asked me, can we remember about the Nicky Sinclair um, Brussels meet as well? If you can do it, please, 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 please do so. Yes. And that's the fourth and fifth, isn't it? It is, yes, it is indeed, the uh, the 4th and 5th. Um, I, I've got it down on my list of things to mention, and, and sorry, I, I got a little bit carried away. Please contact Nicky Sinclair. The links are all over Twitter. They're on our... Yeah, they're everywhere. Put the link in the chat. There you go. Please contact Nicky. If you can get those two days to go to Brussels, please, please, please do. Go there, make your voices heard. Sav and I are going to stay here and hold the fort. They're sick of the sight of me over there and they know what I think and I'll be talking to them anyway. Um, but we also have shows to put out. We're sending two members of the team, Dave, yep. the two Daves, Davey and Dave. Yep. Um, if your name's Dave, go. Go with Nicky Sinclair. Definitely all the Daves should go apart from that Dave. Yes. 
or everybody, if you can go, please go. I would love love it to be the case where Nicky's got to say, sorry, can't get you in. Um, if you can get the time to do it, please, please, please do it. Please do it. Right, Sav, back to the last word. Um, I've lost my last word, but I think the last word has got to go tonight. Um, it's been three years we've been doing this, and without every single one of those people in chat, what's the point? They're all just awesome, and we love every second of doing this for you guys. It's just brilliant. I'm going to echo that. you starting to fill up there, aren't you? Yeah, I love my chat. <laughs> I, I've, I've got to say, uh, it's been three fabulous years. It really, really has. Um, and I'm looking forward to the next three and the three after that and the 33 after that as well. Um, and Sav is so right in what she says. Without you tuning in, it just wouldn't be worthwhile. Uh, we do this for you. Um, we do it because we enjoy it. I do it because I'm a media whore and I get to meet people like Sarah and Sal and the rest of the team and everybody else that I meet. But thank you so much for joining us for the last three years and I look forward to seeing you for the next three years. And Sarah, I look forward to seeing you the next time I see you and thank you so much for coming to join us tonight. My pleasure, especially on your three-year anniversary. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much. Um, and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing BBC London on uh, mm -hmm. Saturday at one o'clock and five o'clock, who now? It'd be yeah. all, if, did you speak very poshly? No, yeah. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. Okay, we well, know Johnny didn't. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's a big, big thank you to Sarah for coming to join us. Uh, and a big, 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 massive big thank you to Sav, uh, my partner in crime, without whom I just couldn't do this. I know I've told you before, but I'm going to tell you it publicly. When, when Skype went out last week, I panicked. <laughs> I was touching cloth. That's how good it was. <laughs> that's 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 how much Sav means on this show. She's amazing. And that applies to the rest of the team as well. Because without the team, yeah. this last three years would never have happened. It, no, the team are awesome. They are. It's It's been an absolutely fabulous time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for watching. And now more than ever, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down till the next time we see you take care of one another and email the buggers will you <laughs>